Thank you so much for being with us. Today, we have Rachel from Nairobi Feline Sanctuary with us. This is so wonderful. Now, we're like going to half a world away because we're in Hong Kong. You're in yeah. Africa. Thank you for having me. Happy oh, to be here. Thank you. Rachel Nelson, 2010. She started going on a life journey looking for a purpose in life, and she found out about yoga. Found that it really resonated with her as she traveled to India and learned more about it. And while she was learning about yoga, she learned about himsa, which is non-cruelty. Actually, I just learned that word today. And the Indian state of Gujarati is vegetarian, right? Not vegan, but vegetarian. And that's where Rachel started just learning this journey. And that's where she found the connection between animal product consumptions and cruelty. That's when you started going vegetarian as you went back home to Africa and you were looking for vegetarian recipes and that's how you went to veganism. Rachel, she had really deep sympathy for animals. And now that her eyes are open to the suffering that they endure, she felt that she had to do something for them. We have this huge thing in common. We both really love animals, any animals. And just like me, I think we say this all the time, we would rescue all if we could. But of course, given your space, you could only fit cats. That's like me as well. So you started going by what, rescuing two from your village. And one was a stray cat that was roving the streets hungry. And the other one was a kitten that was like the runt of the litter and somehow got kicked out from the mom. And you rescued both of them. People realize that you love cats. Of course, if you're the person that loves cats, then when people find stray cats, they basically call you up. I'm guessing the rest is history. And that's how your sanctuary started, right? That's pretty much like my journey. Oh, we have to do what we have to do. Oh, yes. For us, it feels very normal. We're just doing our part. Knowing that you have so many applications that come in every day, how do you decide if these adopters are serious in that they're in it for the long run? Because it seems like they all look the same in the beginning, right? So how can you tell? So we require that they have to make a visit for the actual interview. They have to come physically to the shelter. When we are able to tell, you can always tell if someone loves the cat because as soon as they enter our gate, they have to interact with the cats. Wow, it's and so also, have to feel it, yeah. that energy. And then we interview and ask all the right questions. Do you have a cat return? Do you have a cat bench? Have you bought the food balls? Will the cat have a place to enjoy the sunshine? Because let's face it, they have to go to a place that is better than what we have here. Definitely. Wow. Do you the same. ever visit their places or do they only come in? Do you ever visit the homes? If we cannot decide whether it's a good fit or not, mm -hmm. we have volunteers who offer to go and check out the place for us. Oh, yeah. We do that in Hong Kong. Except for in Hong Kong, it's mandatory. They have to do it. Yeah. 99% okay. of the time here, it's a must. So when they come here, in most cases, one cat will choose the person and they'll bond. They are off to a good start because they have already met in an environment that is comfortable for the cat. Oh, of so course. If, if they walk to the person and start petting the person and interacting, then you know it's probably a good fit because cats are very intelligent. Yeah, and that's what they say. It's the cats that choose yeah. the owner. Yeah, 99% of the time, that's how people get to adopt the cats. Oh. A cat will just come and you'll meet many cats and one cat will seem to be bonding with the person. So in reality, we have very few returns. Oh, really? Very few. Like in the last two years, we have had only two returns. Oh, that's really, oh, I see a cat. Hello. Who's this? That's winter. I call her winter wonderland. Oh, beautiful cat. That's yeah. very impressive having such a low return rate. Wow, that's very yeah. admirable. Something we can definitely yeah. learn from you guys. That leads to another question is what are some of the appropriate living conditions for a cat? And how do you ensure that the adoption family is suitable? You mentioned a part of it, the food, the water, the space to see yeah. outside. Any other things yeah. that you look at? Yeah, we have to be sure all family members are okay with the cat coming in. So when we interview, when people are coming to adopt a pet, it's a big deal. And most people would not want to lie. So 
go to my children, a person in their home who is the last chance. Mm. And we ask them maybe next visit, come with the first one, then we can see how he or she interacts with the cat. Because they may not like the cat, but if they're able to leave the cat alone or mean they don't show the cat fear, yeah, then it's fine. Yeah, mm. that's true because you can't make them love them. But as long as it's neutral and that they're uninterrupted, yes. it's still yeah. okay. No, that's acceptable. As long yeah. as the other family members love the animal. But in my experience, the person who didn't like cats, the cat grows on them. They yes. end up loving the cat more than the, the original adopter. Yeah, there's like a few cats that I fostered or helped rehold. It was the same thing. There's one spouse that doesn't like it. But when I call back in a few months, I'm like, how's things? Are you guys fighting about the cat? They're like, no, my husband spent so much time with the cat. They forgot about me. Yeah, happens a lot because cats, I don't know why, but they're able to tell a person who is really not into them. And that's the person they work on seriously. They're <laughs> only going to ask for pets to help. And who can resist a cat anyway? Once you interact with a cat, very hard to help them. I completely agree. It's some of the families that adopted from us and said it's addictive that at the beginning yeah. they said, oh, it's only one cat. It's only one. Yeah. We're not taking mm. any more. By the mm. time I talked mm. to them a year later, it's, oh, we got four. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're so easy to take care of. They mm. bring joy into the inner space they are in. We don't bring mm. anything just by lying there and looking. It's so wonderful. Actually, another question I wanted to ask was, you mentioned when you're evaluating these families, you're hoping that there's enough space and, you know, that mm. there's some ways for them to see outside. Is it common mm. to have indoor, outdoor cats in Africa? Yes. And um, in fact, most cats are uh, outdoor cats. Oh. And especially in the rural areas, they're mostly outdoor doing their thing. They may come in to sleep at night or not, and they're just happy that way. Oh, because it's relatively safe for the cats. Oh, but that's because people live in houses, right? Because in in Hong Kong, everybody lives in skyscrapers. (laughs) It's impossible. In the cities, right now, we are also heading there because most of the residentials in our city, there are more apartments now. They still have balconies. Sometimes the cat is allowed to go downstairs and play in the yard and then come back. But we try to discourage that because now it's no longer safe if it's an apartment building. Yeah. We always hear cats falling out. We do that here in Hong Kong too. We make sure that either people don't open their balcony doors or that there's like a netting that's protecting them. Yeah, they have to cut through. Until we had a case of a cat that fell from the chest floor. It was not a cat adopted from here, but... The owner could not take care of vet bills, so they brought him here as an emergency. Right. And we tried to see the cat, so the vet did some surgery, but mm-hmm. usually such a fall, they may not recover. Yeah. And it's, if they did, they don't have any quality of life. When people say cats have nine lives, it's like, no, maybe that one fall exhausted all of them. That's why I always tell the families, it's one of those accidents that you can't afford to happen, not even once. Yes, and they're 100% avoidable. Oh, definitely. If you keep your cat indoors, that's a happy indoors. It's just that sometimes we try to transfer our own emotions and needs and what yeah. have the cats. But cats mostly don't mind being indoors. As long as they have a loving human food and water, a comfortable couch to mm-hmm. own. Their- yeah, they're pretty yeah. content most of the time. Look at my house. This is like my living room. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a cat, I would not have to read the melody. Oh, it's so fun because when people come over, mm-hmm. they always count my mm-hmm. cats. They said, I thought you have 10. I was like, yes. It's like, how come I only see three? I was like, they're right above your head. They don't want to come down. <laughs> they don't have to come down. It's like a jungle yeah, in their but, house. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And it's it's super luxurious for a cat. Any cat would be happy there. Oh, they're very confident here. I feel like I'm the one with the lowest rank at home. <laughs> now, imagine having 500 and over. How many? Is that how many you, you guys have? Yes, almost 600. You know. <gasps> Because even like today, we have received eight cats. In a given day, there are cats coming in. Wow. That's insane. I couldn't imagine because the sanctuaries in Hong Kong are not that big. 
So you can imagine they're stuffed in very small cages, just stacked to the mm-hmm. brim. Wow, I can't wait until until we take a look at your sanctuary. I didn't realize you have that many cats. Oh my God, now I need to buy oh a ticket God. to see you guys. This is so good. We would love to have you. I would not leave, trust me. I would I be know. holding myself in there <laughs> after you close. <laughs> be like, I'm not leaving. <laughs> Okay, another thing I want to know is what are some suggestions you have for these prospective adoptive families so that they can make sure that they understand the cat specific needs? Because cats have a lot in common, but then there's a lot of individual differences. So what are some suggestions you can have for these families if they want to try to understand? The first thing we tell them is that these cats all have their own different personality. They may have some things in common, like they need to know that once they adopt a cat, most cats will want to hide. For a week or two, they'll be picking at you and going back to hide. So we require them to provide a hiding space for the cat. Oh. Or we ask them to let the cat choose their own hiding space within the home. Once they see where the cat is quivering, that's where they place their litter box and some water and food in close proximity. And that cat stay there until they're ready to be free and with a new family. But oh. it's very important if the cat is personality that likes to hide when they get to a new thing, that should be provided for them. After all, you're going to spend the rest of your life of his life to be that. So kind of doing it at it. their pace as well. Because a lot of people mm-hmm. want to force the cat to come out to socialize mm-hmm. like ASAP. Mm-hmm. What you're saying is basically just let them do it at their own comfort yeah. and then they will come out yeah. when they want. And I tell them that even if it takes two weeks for mm-hmm. him to warm up to you, it's still a shorter period than when you force it. If he feels harassed, if he feels harassed. Of course, you're trying to show them love, but they think they're being harassed. Oh, of course. I think it yeah. saves a lot of stress down the road that you're making yes. a good first impression because if they're kind of breaking through this period, the beginning period, mm-hmm. at their terms, mm-hmm. then they don't mm-hmm. feel that there's anything threatening going on. So to take the mm-hmm. next step going forward is actually easier for everybody. We have to teach them how to handle it. Okay. We are not too old, how not to live to the third by the years or we have a kids education and they hear every month. Oh. So we teach them how to handle the cat. That makes life easier for both the children and the cat. Because the cat will definitely defend himself if you oh. lift him the wrong way. Oh, of course. We don't want anybody to lose an eye or something. Sure. So we train them how to handle the cat. Oh, wow. We have we keep in touch for two months. Then we figure out Two months is enough for us to know whether they are good fit or not. And then after that, we need them to live their life happily together. Oh, wow. I like that program a lot. I wish we have that here in Hong Kong. I don't think we have that either. Space and time is an issue in here. So to be able to have that, it's very difficult. But we never had any complaint. We have only heard the cat is so loving, the cat is so... Focus. Of course, some of them will surprise us that they are talking then here. They never used to talk, to be so chatty. But usually do they see a difference between a shelter setting? Is it possible that it's more stressful compared to when it's at home so that the cats act a different way? Is that common? Mm, yes, but not very common because in our shelter, we try to give them as much of a home setting as possible. Oh, wow. They are allowed to lie on the seats. You'll see. They are allowed to lie on the seats. <laughs> they are allowed to climb in the kitchen cupboard. So for them, it's not such a big change. The only big change is that now they have their attention, much more human attention. And that makes them thrive. That is very different than what we're hearing in Hong Kong or, say, in North America. Mm-hmm. Because the way that the shelters are designed, it's pretty much everybody's in a cage or everybody's in a kennel. And usually these places aren't that big, especially in Hong Kong. One thing that we hear all the time is that they're like, oh, how come the cat was like this at the shelter? But a few weeks later at home, it's like a completely different cat for the better. But what people don't understand is that in the shelter environment in Hong Kong is pretty stressful because there's not a lot of space. 
wow, but you guys have all the space in the world. I'm so jealous. Can I move there? Of course, it's not so big, but the parts are small and they don't yeah. mind sharing space. The only difference is that here they'll get to be more quiet because they don't want to attract the attention of anybody. But when they get to all their adoptive homes, they become a bit more chatty. Like our one of our adoptions was Chloe. She was so quiet here. She would phone us around and when she wants something, she would ask, but she was not very talkative. But she wanted her new owner sent me a video. Chloe waits for her at the gate, gets into the car, examines the car. Oh, the whole churching. And I couldn't believe that was Chloe. <laughs> wow. How it works. She has become very talkative. Oh, no. Yeah. Vocal, which is a good thing. I feel so good that she found just the right human oh. for herself. So she oh. chose her. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you guys let people do that. I know you mentioned in the beginning that your return rates is not that high. Like you said, mm -hmm. there's only, what, about two? But from your experience, mm -hmm. what was the reason that people return pets? One is maybe they, uh, and I'm so happy that person understands the cat because maybe they found that. It was a romantic idea to have a cat and post videos online. But cats I also had one. You have to do the data. You have to make sure they have food. There's a bit more cleaning than if you are just alone. Mm. And they need attention. Yeah. Then they find that a bit overwhelming and say, no, I didn't want to oh. So they just think they can't man. The yes. other one was just a bad parent because the cat had uh, some... I think he reacted to something. He was missing. Instead of uh, having them having a bed checkup, they just dropped the cat back. Oh, wow. So they just brought you back a mm -hmm. sick cat just because they don't want to treat yeah. it. Then the cat had okay. found another home within no time. He's happy there. Sometimes the returns, I don't mind so much because I'd rather they, the cats come back here yeah. than suffer here. It's better that they return it to you than to just leave yeah. them outside. That's the good part out of the bad part, especially when you said with the first family. I think that's so true. A lot of people mm. really romanticize the idea of having mm. pets. They think about all the mm. fun stuff without the work mm. that they have to put in until reality starts to hit. And they're like, oh my gosh, we have to do all this. I'm like, yeah, that's like with anybody. <laughs> just like children. And yeah. the kitten are just like small babies and the older cats are just like your children. They have similar needs. Of course. Mm. That, see, that's the thing, right? Some people are like, oh, how could you spend all this time? But I'm like, wait, you made a conscious decision to bring them home. Nobody forced you. Yeah. Yeah. I say that to all of my friends who are thinking about getting pets, be it buying them or be it adopting them. I'm like, don't forget, you decide to bring them here. Nobody pointed a gun at you. So you decide to please do think about all the goods and bads and ugly because it's going to cost you money and time. It's just like with anything. And they're going to have accidents on your carpet. And they're, all of these things. Just of like course. You're a child. Well, how your child would behave because they don't know better or they can't help themselves. Same with the animals. But and then uh, somebody returns the animal then with an animal that I thought they're not happy with. Yeah. To us, they are all very precious and very important. So we would rather have them back here and then try to get them another home. Of course, when they get back, for some weeks, they are really depressed because for them, maybe they had bothered with that person. Maybe it's something in that home they loved or were totally used to. And also the solitude of being away from so many of their peers, their friends, having their own space. Of yeah. course, they feel the separation, but of course, in there they do get good homes and they heal and move on. And so, what we do when we get a return, we try to give them more attention, keep them close. However, this is we are, we try to do that. Help them is to the shelter. Yep, we can only try our best, but really good job on having such a low return rate. You see the really skinny cat I was here just earlier. He got abandoned by his previous owner because he had really bad diarrhea. Instead of taking him to the vet, they basically dropped him off at my friend's shop and just left him there. Glad that he got abandoned because I think he deserves better own. It didn't really take that much to cure him. It only took finding the right probiotics. It only took about a couple months. 
Do you have any good advice for these cat parents or prospective parents? Some things for them to think about before adopting, just important things that they must consider. Yes, they must consider that to bet the cat more than the material things because anybody I believe can give a cat they have for the requirements more than the material necessities for the cat. What they need most is attention. And some of them really, really crave their attention. So you have to be sure you have the time and the patience and you have to be ready. The country will identify you as mom or as dad. They want to spend as much time with you as possible. We're not saying, no, quit your job, stay home, stay with the country. Within reason, try to give the cat some time. And also, you have to realize that. Thanks. Do get sick, just like that. Vet bills are um, something to think about. Vet bills can really go high. You have to be ready to give that cat medical attention. You don't expect that the cat will live with you maybe for his entire lifespan without getting sick once. That would be so, near impossible. Yeah, you have to be ready for some vet bills here and there. Your adoption includes new tearing and vaccinations and the warming up to date. For the annual vaccinations or the, the, the quarterly, the quarterly the warming, that is simple. You can actually do it. Yes. So we try to let them know that though we have taken care of the bitter bills, you have to expect that you may need to visit the vet. That's true. Yeah. That's true. For me, I'm like the living example. Like when I first had my cat, pet insurance was mm-hmm. not that common in Hong Kong. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to get insurance, but I'm going to make sure for every cat that I have every year, I have to put this much money in the account in case something yes. happens. That's exactly mm-hmm. what I did with 10. My parents were so shocked that they're like, wow, you have that big of a savings plan? I'm like, no, it's for my cat children. One last mm-hmm. question I have for you is what words do you have for any cat or pet parents for them to think about before they decide on surrendering their pets or cats? Some of the surrenders we have, because somebody will say that, no, I developed an allergy, so the doctor asked me to give up the cat. You say, no, please, don't be lazy. Have the tests. Make mm-hmm. sure it's the cat you are reacting to, because it could be anything. We've had people who were about to surrender their cats and when they went for better tests they found out no it was wrong a cat it was something else it was something else the <laughs> poor cat was just the like, speech oh and no it's a good is this and because of course, yeah and because of course as some of these things they are psychological our bodies can react like that so once they have the test and they confirm it's something else sometimes the allergies it's not only the cat they're able to be with the cat and not have any reaction. That's true. So I had allergies yeah. all my life to cats. And I just mm. manually ride it out by forcing myself to live with them. And the immunity just builds up over the years. <laughs> yeah, because our bodies are really intelligent. And if they find some, because there are people with uh, very serious clinical issues, but it is actually the cat making it worse. And we understand, but mm. we can't have out of 20 people that 18 people are allergic to cats. It's impossible. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I completely agree. So Rachel, would okay. you like to show us your sanctuary? Because I'm sure most of us have never seen what a cat sanctuary looked like in Africa. So please take it away. Show us what it looks like. I'm dying to know. These are the ones that like sitting with us, with me in the office. Oh, hello. What's their name? Coco and her uh, daughter. Oh, hello. Hey, Miss Coco. <laughs> so, oh. this is the yard. This is where they like. Oh, they like. Oh, hello. Hi, Maria. <laughs> hey, oh, it's like yeah. a cat cafe. Yes. My gosh. Okay, that's a lot of space. So they just free roam. Huh? No wonder why you said they're not stressed out. Is because they're not no. living cages. No, they're not. Of course we have we have the cages. We have the cages for the ones that are ill. When they first come in, 
you have to quarantine them. Yeah. And I'm on that. They just left to room sleep. Really? 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 That is so cool. Look at them. And they don't even fight. No. Oh my gosh. Oh, I see one on top of the little house top right here. Hello. Oh. Yeah. Which is uh, we feed the ones that can eat well with the others. Oh, they're doing so good. That's a really big sanctuary you guys have. How big how big is it? It's just fifty by hundred. It's not really big. It's just as cats don't need so much space. Fifty by a hundred meters? Feet? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. Do you guys go by feet or meters? Know. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I'll find out for you and text you. Yeah. Interesting. But it's really big already in Hong Kong standard. This is like a mansion. So we have uh, we have coverage with mesh. Ah, on the, so they can enjoy the sun without wandering off and disturbing the neighbors. Oh, this is beautiful. Very nicely done. What a great design. Yeah. In Africa, is there the danger of other wildlife coming in to maybe to hunt people's cats, like in people's backyards? Is there such danger? It depends. It, it, yeah, it depends, but it's very rare in the city. It's very rare in the city, just out there in the rural areas. Oh, wow. Usually what kind of animals is it that that you guys are scared of in the rural areas that can hunt yeah. cats. Male cats are very male cats are very hostile towards the eat cats. Which ones? Sorry? Male cats. This one's a hunt. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> oh look at uh -huh. this one has some energy. Right? Yeah. So <gasps> So nice. Oh, there's another room in here. Yeah, it's so they are free to walk around. They are free to walk around. I can hear them. Oh. Yeah. <gasps> okay, the place is really big. Yes. Is this a square room area? Is that for the new cats? Yes, that is where the little cat stayed, which I can open for you. It's very warmly. Oh, they have the clay medium. I'm ready. And they have their bench. Oh, wow. And they have the little spear. Very well done. This is so nice. Did you know that this setup you have right there is the setup that a lot of yeah. big cat hotels in Hong Kong they call it cat hotel. Yeah. Where oh, sanctuaries yeah. is very small, the cages. Oh no, this is quite huge. It can fit a mom with her, with her kittens. Even if she has eight kittens. Oh, beautiful. I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah, and, and of course, the rest can play outside here. Right. Oh, I didn't have one yeah. This is so impressive. And you guys are able to keep it so clean. Yeah, but if we, if we change the blankets daily, this is today's washing. This is what was changed today. It's waiting to go to the wash. Wow, this is so cool. And I see a tent at yeah. the back on the floor. Just like a tent that you have. Yeah. I have something similar. Yeah. So you see, they look so few, but there are very many cats around here. Like this one, she's here, see? Oh, hi, Mama. And she has two kittens. Oh, hi, Mama. Oh, <laughs> good job. She looks so relaxed. They're so taken yeah. care of. Oh, good job, Rachel. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I salute to you. They need that big that space and they get to their little bolsters after that. <laughs> oh. Each of them has a little condor like right like, situation. Oh wow. This is so yes. cool. But even that's really you said your place is what 50 by 10. That's still pretty big. Even. Yeah. It's a wait, five let me see. What is it? Does 
Africa go by meters or feet? Let me see. You guys it's go. A, it's a, what, it? 50 by 100. 50 by 100? Yes. <laughs> okay, even if that's feet, that's really big. It's big, yes. That's 5,000 square feet. <laughs> Okay, just so oh, you know, no, Rachel, yeah. that's really big in Hong Kong standards. Yeah, yeah, they actually have a lot of space. This is too cool. Everybody who's watching this video, next time you go to Africa, please go visit her sanctuary. This is going to be a once in a lifetime <laughs> thing. This is too cool. I can yeah. say with confidence, a lot of the places here, especially in Hong Kong, in Taiwan, mm -hmm. Japan, mm -hmm. or even Korea. I don't think the sanctuaries are that big. Wow, this is too cool. Yeah, they do have a lot of space. They mm -hmm. move around, so they are not strange. Oh, wow. And do you, and one other question I have is, do you have you ever reached a point when there's just way too many cats that you can't take in anymore? Yeah, that's really because I think we had not reached our own capacity yet. Okay, yeah, that's good. Oh, there's a room in here. Hi. Oh, yeah. So this is where they, when if it's raining during the day or it's too much, they come to load in here. Oh, so it's like a little chill out room. Wow, this yeah. is so well thought. Yes. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And they can play all around. Hi, Mama Cat. Hi, yeah. And we also have hiding spaces here. Oh, wow. You could so tell that these cats are so at ease. Just the way that yeah. they're relaxing. They're not even yeah. skittish. Because the ones that you see, the, that I've seen in Hong Kong, or sometimes even the ones in Canada, when they're in the cage, they're usually mm -hmm. pretty scared. Yeah, and a bit depressed. Mm. So even our quarantine, we try to make it the bare minimums because I know uh, cats really get stressed uh, about consignment. Oh, of course. The humans too, right? It does something to yes. your brain. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we can to keep them at a very short time, just enough for us to know yeah. if they are well or not. Wow. Good job. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm not like Yes. So next, I'm going to show you our nursery. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Please do. Where would we keep the mamas? Oh. Not uh, yet. Not do that. you have any mamas that come to your sanctuary and then shortly give birth? Yeah. Like, about so many. <laughs> Is the trap and neuter program common where you are? Oh, yeah, we do. Even now, in terms of shelter, we do that a lot. Mm. So this is our nursery. Oh, wow. I could hear, I could hear the cats. Oh, little ones and their mamas. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah, so many, sometimes we have some neonatal, so when we have to sit them, we can shoot today. Wow. I think the cats are... So these are the new healthy mom. You remember I showed you a mama with her kittens? Yeah. But she's not, she's unwell. That's why she's out there. Oh. But here we have the new mamas and kittens that are healthy. Okay. So yeah. the, when they first come, they stay here. And when she's a ten of them come when they are healthy pregnant. So they stay in here. And then once the kittens are older, they can come to the nursery floor and they can have all the things they need. Oh, this is play. so good. And the very young, the ones that don't have mamas at night, like these ones, now it's feeding time. So they have to stay here inside and feed. And then they'll come out and play. And then back at night, they'll be back in their unit to sleep. But in the morning, then they'll come out and play. Oh, well, wow. I think you're doing so many things right by having this set up. Because I remember I, I heard from a lot of the vets and the, the cat behaviors. They said the mental condition or the kind of stress mm. level that mommy is in when she's pregnant really has an mm. impact on how the babies the are team. doing. Wow, yeah. but they're so relaxed yeah. right now. So the babies that are born are starting off so well just by having all of yeah. the conditions. 
Yeah. No, this is yeah, this is our current right? This ah. is where you know almost when we don't know cash is sick, we don't know what's happening. Okay. We keep them here too. We can do the tests or determine what they have. Then we, when we know what they have and we start treating, we move them to basic to be. Wow. Do you have vets that are like just yeah. stationing yeah. inside 24-7? Yeah. 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 We have one vet that is here in Tomanesh. We have other two vets that are here. So this quarantine has two rooms. I don't want to open this one, but this is another room. For mm. just like this one, we have two students for quarantine. Wow, this is so organized. I really like it. This is yeah. so fascinating. Yeah. Wow. This is too cool. Yes. Wow. Yes. I am so I at a loss for words. This is so unheard of. Yeah. So finally, we have a sick bed that is actually outside. Oh, near the entrance to the sanctuary. Ooh. So this is our sick bit. Oh, let me see. Oh, kitties. Um, Hope we get well yes. soon, kitties. So, well, they don't stay here long because it's very rested. Mm. And there's a person assigned to this place at 4 7. So they can't really, sh they heal so fast. And then we move them back to the under. But it is young, and is, within no time, they are ready to change the population. That is so cool. That is too yes. cool. Yeah. Wow. So that's our entrance. We have to enter this is the main entrance. And then uh, now, this is the uh, sick bay and the washrooms for visitors. And this is now the main the entrance to the shelter. Oh, wow. So there's no danger of cat escaping as well is so well no, designed. It's so well designed. I, I really like this. So now they are if the stuff that I am <laughs> Oh look at they don't care what you're doing. They're like, yeah, yeah, they're like film all you oh, want. Man. We're just gonna eat yeah. right now. Yeah. Wow, this thing mm -hmm. people have to see this to to believe it is that a lot of people think that cats are doomed to fight when they when you put them together, like in in a mm -hmm. house together. I'm like, if I have ten cats in an apartment, they don't fight. You have six hundred mm -hmm. cats in like five thousand mm -hmm. square feet, and they don't fight. They're, we've got to do something pretty right. We've got to pat ourselves on the back for that one. Yeah, they they yeah, do, and they, they, there's always a bully mimic the mimic to say. And it's, and it's, they really fight this just They might bicker, they might chase each other a little bit. Yeah. But it's not yeah. really real injuries or hurt. Maybe right. some feelings are hurt, but other than that, there's no real injuries. Same thing with my house. The oh, most you yeah. hear is like hissing, and that's about it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. I teach other once in a while, but not only a fight, same thing for their lives. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Rachel, for showing us. Wow, this is a real eye opener. I'm so glad I found you. This is so awesome. And thank you for sharing all those valuable lessons to just all of our viewers. This is really good. Yes. You're most welcome. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> wow. I just want to live here. And we have one rescue dog. Oh, does he get along with the cats okay? Yeah, he does. Is it the white one? Huh? It's the white dog. Is it a white dog? Yes, one. Thank you so much, Rachel, for showing us a tour and really for all that sharing. There's so much that we just learned from you. I wish I could just keep asking you, but we'll have to save that for another episode. I just want to say thank yeah. you so much once again. And for everybody that's watching, Please do go visit Rachel whenever you go to Africa. I'll put all her information yeah. for her sanctuary. And for those of you, if you want to support her sanctuary, I'll put the information there as well. But do pay her a visit because now we have a friend yes. in Africa. And yes, we do. We have a friend in your country as well. Oh, yeah. Come visit us anytime. If you have any of your staff, any of your followers that's coming to Hong Kong, they're yeah. more than welcome to yeah. check out my place. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. So I will talk to you soon again. And thank you once again. And you stay well until the next time we meet, okay? You too. And thanks for this. We also had a lot of fun.
Yeah. Thank you so much. I will see you soon. I'll, I'll see, see you, Rachel. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.